Hello, this is Chris Pratt from Eurogamer, and there's some new DLC on its way for Total War Warhammer. It's all about the Wood Elves, as you can see, and look, that's a big forest dragon with antlers on its head. A dragon with antlers. That's that's ridiculous, but I quite like it. Um, yeah, so this is similar to the Call of the Beastmen pack that you might remember from a little while ago, which means the Wood Elves are being introduced to every grand campaign uh, in Total War Warhammer, whether or not you own the DLC as an AI-controlled race. However, if you do own it, you'll be able to play as them, and you will also be able to unlock a... Uh, a separate mini campaign with a more story driven objective on a different map, I imagine, although I haven't actually seen the mini campaign in action. In fact, all I've seen and played for myself is this quest battle that you're watching right here, which is the Wood Elves versus a bunch of nasty beastmen, some of them with like this weird bubble mechanic which makes them invulnerable for a certain amount of time. Hope that doesn't make too much of an appearance in this game because that is, that is brutal. Um, anyway, let's talk about the, the roster itself. I do know quite a bit about the Wood Elves because the people that made it have explained a bunch of this stuff to us already. The Wood Elves can really be split into two separate parts when you're looking at their, their roster. You've got the, the Elves themselves, so the guys with those pointy ears, really good at archery, hiding, that kind of thing. And then you've got the Tree Thoke, which are the bigger, sort of, usually more tanky units, which can actually stand up for themselves in, like, melee combat, as you saw there, which is useful. Uh, however, the, the Wood Elves have some of the most versatile ranged units in the game, without a doubt. Uh, and more than that, they introduced some gameplay mechanics that we just haven't seen in a Total War game before, uh, the entire series. Like, so for example, every single Wood Elf Archer can move and fire simultaneously. Some of them have a 360 degree firing radius. Some of them can remain hidden whilst firing. I think that's limited to a certain type of hero unit called the Waystalker, but maybe there's, there's more examples of that. And on top of that, your archers can be equipped with specialized ammunition, which means you can give them longer range, you can uh, have their arrows apply a fire or poison effect, or you can um, equip one which I think is called Scattershot, which basically hits multiple targets with every arrow and means it's really good at taking out large groups of uh, units. There's, there is so much versatility to this force, and yeah, if you're good at you're even half good at micromanagement in a Total War game, or you just like to pause a lot, this army can achieve loads. However, as I found out during this quest battle, when it comes to melee combat, a lot of those troops are incredibly squishy. We've got a lot of kind of glass cannon units going on here. So the Tree Thoke, which we mentioned earlier, have a little bit more about them. However, this is an important thing about these two halves of the, of the roster. Depending on which legendary lord you pick, uh, Orion is the the guy for the the sort of the Wood Elves themselves, and then there's oh, I've forgotten Darthu, I think on the name of the 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 Tree Thoke legendary lord. Basically, he's the oldest tree in the world, which is a cool backstory, I guess. Depending on which legendary lord you get, you can purchase at will units from that particular roster if you have the the, the right buildings anyway. However, if you want to buy, say you're, you've picked Orion, the kind of Wood Elf legendary lord, but you want to get some Tree Thoat units in your army to give it a bit more, just make it a little more well-rounded, I guess, you need to spend a new resource called Amber. Now, Amber is something you can only acquire by taking over enemy regions on the campaign map, and the Wood Elves, by the way, can control every single uh, region in the game. They're the first faction, the first race to be able to do this, which is exciting. However, they can't really build much when they when they capture a region. However, they get this amber resource, and amber can be spent to acquire these different units and make more well-rounded armies, which is really useful. However, you'll also, if you're playing the Grand Campaign, need the amber to improve the Oak of Ages, which is this like, sort of like wonder building that you've got back at home, and that's actually how you win the game, and it requires an awful lot of amber to get to its final stage, which will win the game, but you're only getting one amber per region that you control. So think about that. You're constantly gonna have this choice running in the back of your mind about whether or not you want to make better armies, essentially, or try and win the game. And yeah, that's gonna be a trade-off that, that's running throughout the Wood Elf campaign. So not only are they different in battle, they've also got this brand new idea running through their campaign map stuff as well. This is the thing that I like about Total War Warhammer, and maybe the Beastmen were a little bit of a misstep here, uh, you could argue, but the thing I've really liked about their playable races so far is how completely and utterly different they all feel to play. Like, the Vampire Counts can't use ranged units, for example, yet the Wood Elves have all these ranged options. That's two very different kinds of playstyles, and I'm into that. Yes. Anyway, if you'd like some more extended impressions, you can find them on the site. I also spoke to some of the directors from the Total War team about this sort of changing philosophy about how they approach 
designing races and factions and how that isn't just going to be limited to War Warhammer, it's going to feed into the historical games as well. And while we're speaking about the historical games, I've got a bit of news on that front as well. So yeah, there'll be links in the video description. If you're on YouTube, if you're on the site, you're already there. Well done. Cool. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye.